Have you ever made so much money that you ended up wasting some of it? How much did you waste? Was it a few hundred? A couple thousand? How about two million dollars? In 1992, the international drug lord Pablo Escobar was on the run from the police when he found himself stuck with his family in the freezing forests of Colombia. His little daughter was suffering the most from the cold and the only thing he had on him was a bag of money. So what did Pablo do? He took two million dollars from the bag and set it on fire to keep his daughter warm. Two million dollars. Most people would rather die than burn that amount to survive. And that is because most people will never experience the wealth that Pablo had. Money was never a problem for the drug lord. His only problem with money was where to keep it. And since he didn't trust the banks, the crime boss hid most of his wealth in the oddest of places, in barrels, under fields, and behind walls. And for decades since his death, people have been uncovering these hidden spots, to the point that even his nephew found $18 million of Pablo's hidden wealth. But before we get into this, let's first talk about the fortune of the drug lord and how it came to be in the first place. How did one man amass so much wealth from crime that Forbes magazine had to officially name him the seventh richest man in the world at the time? Where did all that wealth go when he died? And more importantly, how did his nephew find $18 million behind the walls of his house? Pablo Escobar was born and raised in the Colombian city of Medellin. His family was so poor that he had to dabble in petty crimes to survive. By the time he was 20, he was into the Colombian drug scene, and by 26, he had gathered at least $3 million. Then, Pablo created the Medellin cartel, made more money, and bought at least 15 planes. Put simply, Pablo Escobar was doing with hard drugs what John D. Rockefeller did with oil. More than $145 million daily in cash, and an annual income of $55 billion. He was making so much money that his cartel spent over a thousand US dollars every week buying rubber bands to wrap his endless influx of cash. At the same time, they also found themselves losing 2.6 billion of that money to rodents. But we all know how it ended. Escobar was fatally shot in the head by soldiers who discovered where he was hiding. So, with Pablo Escobar dead, everyone began asking a very important yet dangerous question. What happened to Pablo Escobar's fortune? When you die, you can't take your money with you. With the amount of money that Escobar was making, he had to have people he trusted who could keep up with the movement of his cash flow. And those two people were his oldest brother, Roberto Escobar, and his immediate younger sister, Alba Marina Escobar. These were the only two people he trusted. There are three ways of categorizing Escobar's wealth, and we will tell you exactly where each and every one of them went. The first category includes his liquid assets, his cars, money, mansions, clothes, amongst other physical material items. The second category includes all the money he kept in hidden places like underground, caves, behind walls, and in the jungle. The third and final category includes money he hid in banks, which wasn't that much because banks didn't really want to keep his money and Pablo didn't trust them to begin with. After Escobar's death, his drug empire, unsurprisingly, fell apart. However, his family didn't get much. The wealth that they had was shaken off them by rival cartels as they sought to decimate what was left of Escobar's legacy. So, they spent most of their money on security. At one point, they had to buy out an entire hotel floor so that no one could sneak up on them. Even the government had to step in by filling the hotel with guards that would protect them from Pablo's enemies. But with time, this became too expensive as their money began to run out. To make matters worse, Pablo had not written any will or left any inheritance for his family. They were forced to make deal with whatever they could find from the first and third category of his wealth, which wasn't much because other cartels, different governments, and even the local population of Medellin had looted, seized, and stolen what they could from it. The second category was where all the money was. Pablo had billions of dollars hidden all over Colombia, but there was one major problem. No one had any idea where the hidden spots were. There was no map for Escobar's hidden fortune because the drug lord had the habit of killing the henchmen he sent to hide his loot. Pablo Escobar would instruct them to shrink his money and hide it by burying it, or keeping it in underground bunkers, or stashing it in caves. And when these henchmen reported back to their boss, he had them killed. That way, he was the only one who knew where the money was hidden. He didn't even tell his trusted siblings where he kept the money. It was all in his head, and was only divulged on a need-to-know basis. So, till today, most of the money he hid away has not been found. However, that doesn't mean there haven't been discoveries. In November 1989, while Escobar was still alive, someone mistakenly dug up $5.3 million that had been stashed in three plastic cans and buried. The year after, another person found $26 million, along with 150 kilograms of gold bars. 
20 years later, in 2009, someone else found $6 million in the jungle where Escobar had created several cocaine factories. That same year, $10 million was again found hidden at his Hacienda Napoles ranch that had become a museum of some sort. Then, a 65-year-old farmer found $600 million buried in hundreds of barrels in a field where he was digging to start a palm olive plantation. He turned everything over to the police. However, the most recent discovery happened when the deceased drug lord's nephew, Nicolas Escobar, found around $18 million hidden behind the walls of his uncle's house. Nicolas had already been living in the house for five years when he discovered the cash, and he was also more than familiar with his uncle's controversial legacy. When his uncle was still alive, Nicolas was kidnapped and tortured for seven hours by people who were looking for Escobar's whereabouts. When the Colombian media asked Nicolas Escobar how he knew his uncle's money was behind the walls of his home, he said it was a vision that showed him. While this might sound sketchy, Nicolas explained that his uncle had used the house as a hideout in the past, and this was not the first time he was finding money in one of his hideouts. Nicolas also found a typewriter, a gold pen, satellite phones, a camera, and a film roll that had not yet been developed. One more thing, some of the banknotes were decayed and could no longer be used. Worse still, according to Nicolas, they had a smell 100 times worse than something that had died. Another person that has been linked to the discovery of the Escobar fortune is a man called Roberto Sendoya. However, Roberto is not just a treasure hunter. Reports claim that he is actually the secret son of Pablo Escobar himself. Since his father left nothing to nobody, he has taken it upon himself to find his father's billions. When he was just a child, little Roberto was saved from the same shootout that killed his mother. He was then allegedly adopted by an MI6 agent who was stationed in Colombia during Escobar's reign. When other rival cartels learned about his existence, he had to be sent away to the UK to avoid capture. He stayed in the UK for many years and only learned about his true identity when he was in his 20s. If you think this story sounds too good, well, it gets weirder. When the MI6 agent that adopted him was on his deathbed, he handed Roberto a coded note that had all the information necessary for Roberto to find Escobar's millions. And ever since, Roberto has made it his life's mission to find his biological father's wealth. It is believed that it was Roberto's codes that led to the discovery of parts of that fortune in a former Escobar mansion in Florida. Was there anything in the safe? Well, if you were the one who found it, would you tell anyone? There are still billions of dollars hiding on Escobar-owned properties. The trick is just finding where they are. But it comes with certain risks, even if it is possible. For example, the same people that found the safe in Escobar's former mansion in Florida also reported that not soon after the announcement, someone stole property from the site. And even Nicolas, who seems to be the only one who has had the best luck in finding the Escobar fortune, told the press that he had suffered an attack many years before from people that wanted his uncle dead. He was abducted by these individuals and tortured for several hours. Two workers who were also captured with him were tortured with a chainsaw. So, even if you feel interested in uncovering the Escobar fortune, bear in mind that there are way more dangerous people who are interested in finding it too. People who wouldn't bat an eye when sending you to meet your maker. For all the treasure seekers out there, if you happen to live in Colombia, you might want to check your walls. And if you have a farm, you might want to dig it up. You never know, you might just find money in barrels or in plastic bags behind your walls. And with that, we have come to the end of our video. Please like and subscribe and turn on that notification bell to see more videos like this in the future. See you next time.